Welcome to Movie Mash Recap, our channel offers fun and insightful movies that will surely entertain you. Please don't forget to subscribe for more interesting movie recaps. We're about to start so sit back, relax and let's dive in. The movie begins with a party in a big hall called Hirat, which was built by Hrothgar, the king of the Danes. The Danes are very happy because the hall is finally finished, and they are drinking a lot and having a loud party. Hrothgar is drinking the most and is very drunk. He is only wearing half of his clothes, talking in a way that's hard to understand, and is having trouble standing up. He looks gross and is making his young wife, Queen Welthau, feel embarrassed. The people at the party start chanting and hitting the ground in rhythm with the chanting. The camera then moves away from the hall to show the snowy hills around the kingdom, where everything is quiet. Eventually we return to hear it, where the party is still going strong after hours. Suddenly, the large wooden entrance doors are blown off their hinges, the hall's torches are extinguished, and the fire in the middle of the hall turns blue and spooky. The creature is massive, around 15 feet tall, and has a vaguely humanoid shape, but it's clearly not fully human. It's misshapen, deformed, and instead of ears, it has sensitive pads that serve as hearing organs. The screaming of the Danes hurts the creature's ears and makes it angry. The creature eventually reaches Hrothgar, who doesn't run away in a drunken panic but stands his ground. The king challenges the monster to a fight, but the creature is unafraid. It looks at Hrothgar for a long time, almost as if it's questioning him, and then suddenly leaves. Back at its cave, the creature's mother scolds it for killing men. We don't see the mother herself, but we catch glimpses of her reflection in the cave's pool. The dead bodies from here it are taken away and burned, and the hall is closed off as a place of evil. Hrothgar talks to his majordomo, Unferth, and we learn that the creature is called Grendel and has troubled the Danes before. The king tells Unferth to spread the word that whoever kills Grendel will receive half of the kingdom's riches as a reward. The scene changes to a ship at sea, with a large wolf depicted on its mainsail. The ship is navigating through a violent storm, and at the front, we see our hero, Beowulf, and his lieutenant and close friend, Wiglaf. Beowulf and Wiglaf arrive on the shores of Denmark and are welcomed by Hrothgar, who greets Beowulf warmly as he knew his father. He provides Beowulf and his crew with food, drink, and lodging to rest and prepare for their battle with Grendel. Unferth mentions a story he heard about Beowulf losing a swimming race and questions how Beowulf can be expected to defeat Grendel if he couldn't even win a simple race against a human opponent. Beowulf and Unferth insulted each other before Beowulf admitted the story was true but explained why he lost the race. In a flashback, Beowulf was swimming against his opponent when a giant sea monster attacked him. While his competitor swam to safety, Beowulf fought and killed the monster, and more monsters after that. The story is somewhat exaggerated, but not entirely untrue. The flashback shows us something that Beowulf did not tell the Danes. He encountered a beautiful siren after fighting the monsters underwater, and he was captivated by her otherworldly beauty. Beowulf and Unferth are still hostile to each other, and Hrothgar intervenes to stop their argument. Hrothgar then goes to his chambers while the queen sings a song for the Geats, specifically for Beowulf. The Danes leave the hall, leaving Beowulf and his crew to prepare for their fight against Grendel. Beowulf decides to fight Grendel with his bare hands because no weapon can harm the monster. He even strips naked to fight him. The Geats begin to chant Beowulf's name, and their noise reaches Grendel's cave, causing the monster to scream in pain. After the torches went out, blue flames burst out of the hearth and something pounded at the doors. Grendel burst in, killing Geats until Beowulf showed up naked to fight him. Beowulf was very strong and agile, and knew how to fight Grendel. They fought back and forth until Beowulf noticed that Grendel reacted painfully to loud noises. Beowulf then jumped onto Grendel's back and hit the beast's sensitive earpads, causing him extreme pain. Grendel tried to retreat, but his arm got caught in chains, and Beowulf grabbed hold to prevent him from escaping. Grendel's arm got pinned between the door and doorjamb as he fled. 
Beowulf ripped off Grendel's arm and announced his name to the monster before he fled to his cave. Wiglaf raises Grendel's arm triumphantly. Most of the Geats cheer and celebrate his victory, but Hrothgar is not among them. He is deeply concerned and upset about the lives lost in the battle. In the cave, Grendel is dying, and his mother appears and asks who is responsible for his death. Grendel whispers, Beowulf, before passing away. Hrothgar is hosting another celebration in honor of Beowulf at Hirat. The king rewards Beowulf with a golden horn, which is the symbol of the Danish kingdom. Despite the festivities, Wiglaf is still upset and goes to the shore to prepare their ship for departure the next morning. From Grendel's mother's perspective, she flies into the hall and tries to identify which man is Beowulf. She targets the biggest and strongest man, and appears to him in a dream as Welthau, pleading for Beowulf to give her a son. Beowulf realizes he is dreaming and wakes up just as Welthau's face transforms into a demonic figure. When he looks around the hall, he sees that all of his men have been killed, and their bodies hang from the rafters. Later, when rumors spread that Grendel may not be truly dead, Hrothgar reveals that the Geats were slaughtered by Grendel's mother. The king seems to have a lot of knowledge about her, but when asked about Grendel's father, he is hesitant to answer. Unferth gives Beowulf his family's sword to help him defeat Grendel's mother. Beowulf and Wiglaf embark on a mission to the cave to avenge their fallen men by killing Grendel's mother. Beowulf insists on going alone, armed with the golden horn and Unferth's sword. The cave is dark, but the horn emits a magical glow to light the way. Beowulf discovers a chamber filled with gold and human remains, including the altar on which Grendel's body lies. Suddenly, Grendel's mother's voice echoes through the cave, asking for Beowulf's identity. She emerges from the water, having transformed into human form. Beowulf is mesmerized, similar to when he encountered the mermaid in his sea monster tale, and appears susceptible to the enchanting powers of mystical female beings. Grendel's mother is impressed by Beowulf's physical prowess and tries to seduce him by promising him a kingdom and everlasting glory in exchange for sleeping with her and giving her another son. Beowulf attempts to attack her with Unferth's sword, but it has no effect on her. She easily disarms him and takes Hrothgar's dragon horn as collateral for her promise. Beowulf is tempted by her offer and seems to be considering it, despite the danger it poses. The scene jumps to Beowulf's return to hear it declares that he has not only killed Grendel but also his mother. Beowulf explains that he lost the horn during the battle with the mother. Hrothgar suddenly announces that all his possessions, including the kingdom and his wife will be received to Beowulf, after he died. Hrothgar celebrates with another feast and asks Beowulf to speak with him privately. The king asks Beowulf to describe what happened with Grendel's mother. Beowulf tells the same story as before, but with a hint of caution in his voice. Its imp is aware of what actually happened and becomes visibly upset but remains silent. They return to the party, but Hrothgar excuses himself and jumps off the castle wall to his death. Beowulf and Welthau are horrified, and Unferth declares Beowulf as the new king of Denmark. We see Beowulf's face, now older and grayer, wearing the Danish crown, looking out at his soldiers on a battlefield. His soldiers are winning the battle, but Beowulf seems almost sad about it. It appears that Grendel's mother kept her promise, as Beowulf has enjoyed unmatched success and glory for the past 50 years. But Beowulf feels that his achievements are all meaningless and dishonorable, gained through a sinful relationship with a monster rather than through his own skill and merit. Beowulf even taunts one of the enemy soldiers, daring him to try and kill him, but he already knows it won't happen and is disappointed. Welthau is Beowulf's queen, but he has started a relationship with a younger woman named Ursula, who genuinely cares for Beowulf. Their relationship is kept secret from the queen, but she is aware of it and chooses not to confront them. One night, Unferth brings a slave to the king and presents Hrothgar's golden horn, which was found on the shore near Grendel's cave. Beowulf becomes alarmed, realizing that this means the agreement with Grendel's mother is no longer valid, and trouble is likely to follow. His fears are confirmed when a dragon attacks and kills almost everyone in a nearby village. 
Unferth is spared and given a message to deliver to the king, his son is waiting for him. Beowulf believes that the dragon is his offspring from his encounter with Grendel's mother. He gets ready to fight the dragon and has a touching moment with Welthau where they confess their love for each other despite past events. Beowulf and Wiglaf then gear up and leave for the cave. Once again, Beowulf insists on going alone. He hears a male voice trying to decide whether to kill the queen or Ursula. Grendel's mother appears and tells Beowulf that it's too late to make amends or renegotiate the deal. Suddenly, a huge dragon appears and breathes fire at Beowulf, but he manages to escape the cave. The dragon then flies toward Hurit and Beowulf grabs onto it in an attempt to fight it mid-flight. Beowulf eventually lassos a chain around the dragon's neck, and they both crash into the ocean. Beowulf grabs an old anchor and jams it into the dragon's jaws just as it was about to resurface. Beowulf is unsuccessful in stopping the dragon, and it begins to attack the castle's perimeter with fire. By coincidence, Welthau and Ursula are talking on the castle's rampart as the dragon approaches and targets them. The dragon burns both exits, leaving the women trapped with nowhere to hide. Beowulf was hanging from a chain in front of the dragon's neck. Beowulf attacked the red spot and discovered it was the dragon's throat, which led to its heart. Unfortunately, Beowulf couldn't reach the heart no matter how hard he tried. The dragon was about to burn the women, so Beowulf cut off most of his arm to free himself from the chain. He lost his sword, but the separation of his arm from his torso allowed him to reach the heart and rip it out, saving the women. He and the dragon fell from the sky and tumbled down the cliffs of the castle. Wiglaf arrived just in time to rescue the women. At the bottom of the cliff, Beowulf and the dragon lay motionless on the beach, with the tide washing over them. Beowulf, barely conscious, witnessed the dragon transform into a human figure, resembling a younger version of himself, covered in Grendel's mother's golden film. As the tide carried the body away, Wiglaf showed up, searching for the king. Beowulf was aware of his impending death, and he disclosed to Wiglaf that he had arranged for him to be the new king. He implored Wiglaf to ensure that everyone knew that he didn't kill Grendel's mother, even though Wiglaf may have already known the truth. In the end, Beowulf passed away with a sense of serenity. Beowulf was given a Viking-style funeral, where he was placed on a boat with a sword in hand, and surrounded by offerings to the gods. The boat was then set on fire and pushed out to sea. While Welthau and Ursula mourned together and returned to the castle with everyone else, King Wiglaf remained behind to watch the boat until it disappeared into the horizon. As he watches the ship engulfed by flames, he sees Grendel's mother appear still human and nude, descend onto the boat and give Beowulf a parting kiss. She descends into the water, and the boat then crumbles and sinks completely out of sight. Wiglaf appeared to be unfazed by her sudden appearance. As Wiglaf and Grendel's mother gazed at each other, it remains uncertain whether Wiglaf resisted her or gave in, just as Hrothgar and Beowulf had done, and thereby started the curse cycle anew. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more interesting recaps.